Hey, great friends. What's happening? It's Friday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew. And before we get started with today's broadcast, let me say a big thank you to all of our sponsors and a big thank you to everybody who watches and listens, who supports our sponsors, including seven mile casino. Their website is seven mile casino.com. If you are thinking, Hey, it's Friday night. What do I got going on tonight? What am I doing? What's this weekend looking like? What do I want to do? I'll tell you right now, seven mile casino makes a lot of sense tonight because they got a great restaurant and bar That's Sammy's restaurant and bar, Sammy's wood fire pizza. They've got all your favorite table games, blackjack, poker, and more. And it's in a smoke-free environment. I talk about that all the time. And I think the best location in San Diego, because it's only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. So you don't have to schlep 30 miles out to East County to go play blackjack or poker seven miles south of downtown San Diego, Seven Mile Casino and sevenmilecasino.com. You're a winner. Good luck. Go get them. Take their money and get out of there. And by the way, uh, any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER, Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Okay, Friday. Think about the weekend. What do you got going on this weekend? How about Tory Holistics and California Holistics? Tory's in Sorrento Valley. California's in Chula Vista. And today is Veterans Day. So let me give you a couple of Veterans Day's deals. Um, between today and through the end of the weekend, veterans receive 20% off every day at California Holistics, okay? There are incredible deals that are happening right now. There's also the sixth annual peanut butter drive that's going on. Uh, Alex, what are you showing us right here? What are we taking a look at? All the Veterans Day deals for for everybody, not okay. just veterans. Okay. Well, veterans get 20% off every day, California mm -hmm. listings. But all these kinds of deals, like what am I looking at here? Tell me. 20% off uh, Care by Design, 25% off Fuss and Friends. Uh, buy a Wonder 4-pack, another 4-pack half off, 30% off Wild, 20% off Kokoko, 20% off Farmer in the Fell, and 25% off Dr. May, 50% off uh, Brothers David's. Buy any Jeter product, get a five grand pre roll for a penny, just nonstop. I mean, deals. dude, I mean, and some of these brands that Alex just mentioned, and we've talked to a lot of the owners and founders through the uh, Holistics Highlights podcast. We've gotten to know a lot of these people, great brands, um, really outstanding products, and all kinds of Veterans Day specials at Tory Holistics and uh, California Holistics. And here's the peanut butter drive. This is awesome. You get a pre roll for a penny for every 16 ounce plastic jar of peanut butter you donate. Um, and this is why we use the Got Your Back promo code, because Got Your Back San Diego takes this peanut butter and literally hands it off to children who just don't have food and nutrition. And so it's a really great thing that Tori is doing uh, just to be a good part of the community and help kids that are really in need. So thank you, Ruthie. We appreciate you. Uh, California Holistics, Tori Holistics, use our promo code, Got Your Back. You'll save 20%. Keep it on. PenskeSanDiego.com, P-E-N-S-K-E, PenskeSanDiego.com. You're thinking about buying a new car, or leasing a new car. We've told you about Mazda for the last couple of years. Mazda of Escondido is a Penske San Diego dealership. We did this great appearance at Lexus San Diego. They are also a Penske dealership. Here's the list of brands that Penske has in San Diego. Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, Mercedes, and Toyota. 12 dealerships throughout San Diego and pretty much every brand you're going to be interested in. Shop online at PenskeSanDiego.com. That's PenskeSanDiego.com. Okay, uh, my man Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. Today's Friday. You're thinking to yourself, what am I doing this weekend? We're considering going to look at an open house, or we'd like to go out and see what's available. Gary has a lot of listings right now, but even if he's not the listing agent, he can go out and show you uh, all the things that you might be interested in, condos, houses, whatever. And Gary keeps telling everybody, hey, look, it's a great time to buy. And so many people ask, well, why? Interest rates have gone up. Yeah, but the prices have come down a little bit. The competition has come down a little bit. And even if you buy now, there are programs where you can buy down the interest rate and you won't pay the high interest rate for another couple of years. And by, by really by that time, we might be through this supposed recession and the interest rates might come down and you actually have a chance to refinance and get yourself into a much better situation long term. So talk to Gary. Never make a move in real estate without first talking to Gary. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. And you know what? I'll say this. We'll talk to Dr. Max Say a little bit later on in the show from iThrive because Alex, I, I will ask you, um, I'm curious because of the wedding and all the food and drinking and you know the little mini honeymoon. What are you down right now on the iThrive weight loss program? Uh, day after the wedding was um, uh, day after the wedding was eighteen down. I haven't weighed in since Monday, um, but day after the wedding was eighteen, and I remember, and my pants fit loose at the wedding. By the way, I don't know if anybody noticed. I don't think anybody noticed, but I had to go buy a new belt so I could put it tighter. 
Dude, I will waist. tell you right now, I um, I actually could see what I think is a very big difference, very noticeable difference. And now that you're telling me 18 pounds, nearly 20 pounds down, I mean, it was very, very noticeable. We'll talk to Dr. Max Say about that coming up. All right, listen, it's Friday. We got a great show coming your way. Let's start the show. Great friends, what's going on? It is Friday. <laughs> Friday from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. <laughs> this is Kaplan and crew. We are on the radio on 1090. We are on television tonight on Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, Channel 118 Orange County in LA. If you've got Cox or Spectrum Cable, we're on YouTube. The chatlins are just starting to get into the live chat right about now. We're on all the different audio podcast platforms. I need to confirm so that we're on your view today. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I don't um, think we are. San Diego State, San Diego State is playing BYU in, in basketball tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, well, I guess I'm, I'm just... Do we, I I, but so. I do think, no, no, but I think, I think what happens is, is after the basketball game tonight between San Diego State and BYU, I think um, we come on afterwards. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm, ch so I'm, checking. Actually, I'm checking. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. Let me know. If not, we're on it all the time on, on Cox, yeah. your view. Channel 4 San Diego is our home base. Uh, okay. So I'm really excited about today's show. And let me explain why. Because you see. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it was me, Browner, and Lawhead. And uh, Alex had gotten done with his wedding on Sunday and took a few days off just to kind of have a little mini honeymoon. And Alex, I think you'll agree, I did a pretty good job of leaving you alone, even while you were on your little mini honeymoon, didn't I? Yes. I mean, you know me, I'm kind of a traditional pain in the ass. I, I need you. I don't care that you're on your honeymoon. Mm -hmm. I need you. I need help. Come on, mm -hmm. help me out here. Like mm -hmm. I, I pretty much did a good job of leaving you alone. I agree. Yeah. Um, Browner here did a phenomenal job over those three days with one minor, tiny little exception, which was on Monday. He didn't put the audio into the audio podcast, which really false. hurts the audio false. podcast. False. It really hurts false. It. That's not what happened. Again, I will repeat to people. It was my mistake. There was audio in there. It was just the last segment. Imagine, Alex, going two hours of no audio only to get to the last segment of audio. So for people who just say there was no audio in there, there was audio in there. It just was muted. So that was my bad. I, which I full, I take full responsibility for the muted segments, but they were in there. They were just yeah. muted. My How about bad. that? So the whole show was muted? No, sir. You're not. See, again, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Five of the six segments were all muted. Yes, sir. On YouTube too. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Audio, How does that podcast, work audio. Could, could, Don't you right, see the wave? You imagine, <laughs> right. You go to Spotify. You're like, I, I, it's on. I can't hear it. And like, you're pushing the volume on your phone. You're turning it on. Phone's like, broken. What the, hell, what the hell's wrong with my phone? I can't hear it. Only to find out that Browner accidentally muted five of the six segments. And then we started to get tweets on Monday, like, Yo, what's up with the audio on the audio podcast? And Browner comes back on Tuesday, and this is his quote. You ready? Mm -hmm. My bad, y'all. <laughs> it was it. It was it. It was my mistake. It was what they call a self error. All a right. Self made error. I, I made All that right. myself. Yeah, my bad, y'all. Yeah, my, my bad, bad. y'all. I All own right. that. I own yeah. that. That was on me. That was on me. But it was sound in there. It was just muted. Yeah, That's my funny. bad, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once we got that tweet, though, uh, Browner went back in and fixed it. But all in all, I got to say, uh, great week. And I'm the reason I'm so excited about today, Friday, is because a lot of people will take today off because it's Veterans Day. And happy Veterans Day. Hats mm -hmm. off to all veterans out there. Okay. Um, really, we we appreciate what you have done and what you do. Like, I mean, yesterday was the Marine Corps birthday. I saw a bunch of Marines. I was like, hey, man, thanks for your service. Appreciate you guys. Okay, cool. Today's Veterans Day. I call my dad. I'm like, hey, dad, happy Veterans Day, my man. You know? And um and so, you know, a lot of people will post pictures of their granddads and their parents and anybody who's in the military. And that's cool. Happy Veterans Day to everybody. We could have taken today off. But Alex had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. He came back to work yesterday. I had to take the day off yesterday. And I just wanted all of us to be back together again 
before we hit the weekend. So I understand that it's Friday and that it's Veterans Day and that people's driving patterns will change, which will change how people listen on radio. I still think we'll have all of our YouTube chat lens here and, uh, and people can catch up over the weekend on the audio podcasts, assuming, of course, that they are all, the audio is really there. But um, I'm just happy we're all back together because, Alex, I haven't seen you since the wedding. Mm -hmm. How? And I'm sure you probably talked about this a little bit yesterday, but how you doing, man? How's how's married life treating you, pal? Oh, it's great. It's it's exactly the same as it was on Friday. Love last week. <laughs> it's literally exactly the same. It's been going really good. I'm tired. Uh, there was a long week, very long weekend of stuff. I I, I haven't fully recovered yet uh, for some reason, but uh, everything is 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 great, Scott. Uh, and the only thing you missed that I talked about yesterday, we didn't talk a lot about it, was the uh, after party shenanigans because you bailed. Uh, yeah. You Irish goodbye it, I think, and um, yep. which I, I did. And by the way, I Irish goodbye it with no guilt at all, because when Rachel was like, well, really, we should just leave like Irish goodbye. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. She goes, well, why is that? OK. I'm like, because that's what Alex would do. Mm -hmm. He's an yeah. Irish goodbye guy. Yeah, I like to leave. I like my me personally. I don't mind if you came and said bye to me, obviously. Me personally, I am an Irish goodbye. -er. I like to leave the couple alone. I'll say bye to people around me. But I like mm -hmm. to leave. They're just busy. You know, that's the way I, I operate. So I, 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 re I respect that's my move. So well, I mean, I thought Browner Browner at what point I on the wedding on Sunday night, once Browner was like, yo, all right, I'm out of here. I got, you know, I got to deal with, you know, people, little people. Yeah. Um, he's like, I got to go. And once Browner was like, I got to go. I'm like, okay, I think it's probably time for us to go too. In yeah. fact, Rachel kind of was like, don't you think it's time for like the old people to leave the young people <laughs> to their party? <laughs> <laughs> Leave the people that have tomorrow off here and then we'll go because we got to work tomorrow. Yeah, because like me and Rachel bailed. Browner had bailed. And then Linda and Austin, they bailed and they sent me a picture from the line at In-N-Out. <laughs> Linda, <and Austin laughs> Linda and Austin bailed really early. But I, I I think Linda, she's probably up early getting her house ready, I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, uh, what well, you guys missed, and I talked to, to Browner about this yesterday, literally the final tab was closing at the reception. And the after party was, you know, as you exit our reception, there's a bar. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's where the after party was, you know, because we didn't want to make it difficult for anybody. So, hey, open the doors. You're at another bar. Let's go till two if you wanted to. Uh, as the final tab was closing, the entire block lost power. The entire block. The the pier, uh, the Star of India, the hotels around, everybody lost power. It was a blackout. And, wow. Yeah. And I was, first of all, I was thankful that didn't happen during the wedding. Um, secondly, it was kind of cool, dude. Cause like we said, like keg, a little kegs left over. It's like my buddies mm -hmm. just filled up their pitchers and we all sat around the after party around like emergency lights that were still on. And we just had a good time right there, dude, playing music That's off our awesome. phone and just chill. Yeah. Let me, let me just tell you something before I, I have two other things I want to just tell you. Um, they're both sitting in front of me. Um, but here's, here's what I want to tell you. Cause I haven't had a chance to really talk to you off air. First of all, I'm super Super proud of you, man. I mean, I, I know this is going to sound really kind of corny on air, but I am so proud of you. Um, you know, listen, dude, we've been together a long time, you and me. Yeah. You know, and um, and, you know, when you and I first really got together, I mean, you were still a, a San Diego State student. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, um, you know, uh, not to get all mushy, but it's like, I mean, gosh, look, at I've known this young man since his college days. And then, you know, watching him get into the radio business and 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 watching him explode uh, in, in particular in the last three, four years of your career, because um, I can remember early in your uh, radio days at 1090, you had no interest in being on the air. Like you, mm -hmm. That was not your goal. Most guys get into radio because they want to find a way to get on the air. Mm -hmm. You know, Browner was willing to take a job in promotions. He's like, oh, my foot's in the door. I'll figure out how to get on the air from here. Yeah. I mean, you did yeah, not dude. really. Right. I mean, right, Brown. Dude, I literally went. I came into that station with the with the goal to get on air. And I started as a promotional assistant, like the lowest job they had there. That's where I started. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. where I started. Right. And, and Alex, you did not really have the goal of being on the air. Um, and then, you know, watching you progress all these years, it makes me uh, in a weird sort of big brotherly kind of fatherly kind of way. It makes me very proud. But I'll tell you right now, your wedding was so real and genuine and heartfelt and loving. I mean, I really I listen, I, I hate to admit this to you. Browner is teasing me. 
But I was like, Linda, give me the tissues. <laughs> Let me have some tissues. I was wearing yeah. sunglasses in the house because I didn't want people to see me all teary. I just thought you were stoned. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that's why I was wearing sunglasses? You know, shout out. Well, to maybe her. that too, but yeah. uh, I was crying a little, you know. Yeah. A little. No, and then the uh, you asked you asked <laughs> last what? You, asked, you asked last did it, did he cry a lot? Because I dude, I didn't yikes. look. At, I did not look during the ceremony. I was like, I am not looking at anybody. If I dude. make eye contact and someone's crying, I'm gonna be a disaster up here because I don't do well when people are crying around me. It's just I that said, like I just don't do well. I said this before when everything was solid, everybody was holding firm. They expected the bride to cry at some point. She held firm. You heard people were just crying out in the in the audience because it's a wedding. It was very, it was beautiful. It was yeah. the, the area, the view. And then when you started like breaking up, it was that was too late. Everybody was done. Every, That's what I heard. Everybody just lost it. They just <laughs> yeah. once you kind of started breaking up, I think people kind of felt like it was okay to then just kind of let it go. Yeah. Linda was pulling <laughs> tissues. This guy's next to me, just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, what are you, what are you yeah. doing? Are you okay? I was proud, and I was, and it's I, like, and is I Justin really, up there getting married? What's happening no, here? But it, it just, it was, it was a very, very loving, yeah, man, ceremony. It was sweet. It was you know, sweet. it really was, and and you could just feel how real it was, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just, it was emotional. And so, anyway, um, Alex, I just also, want to tell you, also man, one last thing. Yeah, I'm so glad you guys didn't have a large wedding. Like what you did was perfect. Because it was very intimate and it felt small and it felt like every it meant something to everybody that was there. And I thought that was a very good uh, uh, moment that it felt like in there. Yeah, it was a beautiful yeah. wedding. And um, and I'll just say that uh, I had a great time and um, I didn't even know there was an Intercontinental Hotel in downtown San Diego until we went down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even the and the party was great. And the mm -hmm. dancing was fun and your friends were all awesome. Mm -hmm. And what I really loved, I, I love this about your friends. They call you Padiva. Uh, that yeah, was a terrible, terrible thing for your friends to give to me and Browner. Oh, it's all the good. The nickname it doesn't of bother Padiva. Me. Oh, yeah. dude, we heard that. <laughs> we love that. Yeah. And just your friends. What's super cool also is, is your closest friends who... Um, know what your job is, which is, you know, Hey, you're on radio, you're on television, you're on YouTube, you're, you're a media personality. The way they all sort of, um, respect that, uh, was, I also thought was really, really cool. And so, um, it was just, it was a beautiful wedding and I was, I was flattered to have been invited and, um, we had a great time, man. Yeah. We really did. So congratulations to you guys. No, thanks you guys. It really, I mean, obviously, you guys were at the ceremony and the reception you saw because last week you asked how if the show would get a mention and i knew already how much mentions it would get because that's how we met so i knew it was coming but i just try to play it off to you like oh maybe you know like i have it in the vows but um i mean it's literally the the genesis of our relationship was the radio show on a total accident so of course the radio show is going to get a, a mention or multiple mentions because that's where we met. And it Engin was uh, engineers for life, baby. Engineers dude. for life, what, dude. One of my favorite parts is when you were kind of reading, not your vows, but you were kind of speaking to yeah. Mar and you're like, thank goodness. I worked for such a cheap ass radio station <laughs> that needed me to engineer things. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, I want to tell you something though. And I, I, I mean this seriously. What's super cool, super cool about you getting married and about the um, intimate relationship that the three of us have with the great friends who are listening on different audio podcast platforms or watching on YouTube or people who catch up to us on TV or just generally radio listeners. Like for example, just, just real quick story for you guys. Mm -hmm. Last night I was playing LA cap and I drove back down to San Diego and Rachel said to me, meet me at this bar. Let's have a, a drink. And I said, okay, so I'll meet her. So I met her at this bar in Encinitas. I'm walking into this bar. And this gentleman who's standing in front of the bar, not working there. He's just, I guess he was waiting for somebody. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, good. How are you? He's like, bro. And he starts talking to me. Like, first, I didn't know. I thought he was just being a friendly guy. Yeah. He's like, dude. He's like, dude, let me tell you something. He goes, I listened every day to 1090. And the day that 1090 went off the air, he goes, I followed everything that you did on social media to explain what was going on. And then I followed everything that you did up at Callaway Golf and going into podcasting. He goes, and now I can't believe how you guys have gotten this radio station back on the air and you're so successful and you're thriving. And I'm like, 
Yeah, dude. Um, I guess when you're in the middle of it, you don't really think of it as being as successful, but I suppose when you're listening and watching, maybe you do. He's like, no, man. He goes, I can't wait till the day that you write the book and you explain the story of how the hell you guys got this radio station back on there. And I'm trying to walk into this bar because I want to go in and meet Rachel. And this guy is chewing my ear, but I'm like proud of it. And, and I'm friendly, of course. Um, but it, it just kind of goes to show you, at least in one small way, how people their lives can be impacted by the, the community that we all have. And just to, to further that point, Browner, listen to this story. Remember on Monday, Alex, I didn't know you were registered where people could give you a gift. Cause I said to you, <laughs> what's the deal with registration? You're like, Oh no, we're not registered. We don't need any air fryers. We don't mm -hmm. need any rice cookers. We don't need new pots and pans. We don't need any crap. Right. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know until the next day, Rachel sent me the, the link. She's like, do you know, Alex is registered. You can send him money. Because I brought a gift card, like yeah. a schmuck, yeah. you know, like, so, so I didn't know that you were registered. And I could have actually zelled money or I could have, uh, you know, uh, Venmo. I didn't know that. Right. Uh huh. So why didn't you tell us that? Uh, I, well, I mean, I sent you guys the invite and was on the invite. I just figured, all right, come on, dude, me, dude, I really I mean, me. I mean, that's why I invited Rachel. <laughs> smart man, smart man. No. well well so monday no yeah we just put a this. whatever website we did the invites from they have the option of putting a venmo so that's what we did so so listen to this. so monday morning she sends me this link she said hey here's the link did you know you, you went and bought a gift card for alex you know you could have just sent him money through the uh through a registration i'm like i had no idea right so john here browner I send him the link. He puts it on the screen on Monday's show. Brown, what would you say? 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Yeah. If, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? This morning, listen to this email that I received from a longtime great friend by the name of Sam Sheldon, who says, thank you for letting us know how we could give Grande a wedding gift. I look forward to my workout each morning because of you three. Simply put, you are the best. There have been so many times that I almost fell off the elliptical because I was laughing so hard. So this person, Sam, sends Alex a gift based on the link that we had put on the screen. And he writes this message, Alex, on your gift. Mazel tov. I'm a great friend that moved to Houston. I listen every morning. I'm one day behind at the gym on my app. Thank you for making my workout so enjoyable from Sam Sheldon. And Sam sent, <laughs> I mean, a good amount thought, of money. Dude, Whoa. that was a very, yeah, very, very generous, very generous gift. But yeah. that goes to show you what what you know you mean to Sam. And then look at this. Um, I told a few people who asked me, they said, Hey, um, how could I send Alex a gift? So I gave a few people who asked through direct message. I they they asked me and I gave them um my P.O. box. And so this is a card from Juliana who is probably in our YouTube chat right about now. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> this was sent to our PO box yeah. and we didn't even look to see the, uh, who it was addressed to. So we opened it up, not knowing what it was. <laughs> Sorry. <Pat. laughs> we, we, we've so we've taped it. We've taped so it. Good. So there's a card here. Juliana sent a very, very generous check. Um, guys, listen. Yeah. I was in the chat yesterday. Thank you, Juliana. Cause she did mention that she sent it to the PO box. So, uh, I, told, I I will be sending messages out to everybody eventually. I'll catch up. I'm I'm saying thank you. Yeah. Like from me, I just want to say thank you to everybody that decided that they wanted to send Alex and Mar a gift because that means I know it means a ton to him, but I can't tell you how much it means to me too. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that just wanted to send a gift to help this couple uh, start the next phase of their life. And, people were very um, generous man and just in general like we tallied i guess tallied i don't want to be like corny or anything but like we we put them all together yesterday and it was just like you counted the money yeah ridiculous that's what the whole dude. point of collecting yeah. it it's really? so ridiculous yeah really yeah so nice thanks chunk of change yeah. huh thank you to everybody for real yeah, maybe i should maybe i should get married i i can i'm ready to be your efficient no, i bro, got you no, homes no listen 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 no no I mean, no no just get married for the money no so get married get get that chunk of change in and then it like, ain't worth it it ain't worth the headache she's got her own money so maybe you can 
Mary divorced. Well, she got a prenup from her. No, no, no. She's going to prenup She will. Ain't, ain't no way in hell. Yeah. She's falling she'll, for the okay two times. <laughs> she'll prenup me. Yeah, she's she going to prenup will. this dude. Yeah. She probably prenup me. Can't get, we can't true. get too successful on this show, though, I didn't prenup. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's, not, let's not blow up. <laughs> All right, listen. Let me tell you what's going to happen today. We got a great show coming your way. Going to get that um, silver but, screen and roll money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, but it's going to be. But I think today's show is going to be a little bit weird. Meaning, I think we're going to have a lot of people stopping in. Jason Lawhead is going to come by because he filled in for you for four straight days. Jay's going to finish the week off with us. Linda Welby, who hosted the wedding at her house, Linda's stopping in <laughs> for a, a little bit. Oh, guess we're what I did talk- last night. Oh, what? tell me what you did. I'll tell you when we come back. Okay. All right. Uh, Brown is going to tell us what he did last night, which, I mean, that sounds interesting to me always. Um, So we're going to have a great show today. We're going to get into a bunch of NFL as we go into the weekend. We'll likely get into some college football as we go into the weekend. There's a lot of college basketball. San Diego State is playing this weekend tonight, as a matter of fact, on Channel 4. Um, there's also the uh, the game that's being played on the Abraham Lincoln, the uh, the aircraft carrier. So I want to get to that. Michigan yeah, where'd State that and come Gonzaga. From? I know. Like, where? <laughs> like, I, I literally, I was like, wait, wait, hold on. San Diego State's playing BYU and yeah. Michigan State's playing Gonzaga here in San Diego on the aircraft carrier and San Diego State has nothing to do with this. So we'll get into all of it. We got a lot of stuff we want to get to and it's Friday, so we have a shorter show. So stick around. We're in the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. Grande's back. The Mishbucha is back. We're just getting going on Friday. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. What's happening Friday afternoon? This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man, and both the Grande and the Brown Man are back. The whole mishpucha is back together again. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. You're looking for something fun to do this weekend. Seven Mile Casino is the best location of any casino in San Diego County because it's only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. It's the only casino in town that's got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, which is Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza on one side. It's a completely smoke-free environment. It's in the beautiful Bay of Chula Vista, a place where many of us probably haven't been to before until we get to Seven Mile Casino. So have fun this weekend at Seven Mile Casino. Good luck. You are a big winner. If you have any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. But let's have some fun and good luck. Let's take their money. At Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. All right, Grande, Brown Man. Um, we started off today's broadcast talking about the wedding from the weekend because it's our first time back together again. Alex, you mentioned um, that you're kind of tired as you're just sort of just kind of catching up now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Been a long week around here, I must admit. Uh, been a very long week around here as well. Uh, because, you know, Sunday was the wedding and I could have been fine on Monday. No problem. I really could have, but without you being here and Brown are moving into your seat, there's a little bit of added stress, but I also had this week, um, a full week of in-person meetings. You guys remember back in the day during COVID, I was like, I'll never have, never leave my house. Never leave my house. I'm I'm never leaving. This is so much better. Right. Get all of us on the screen because I'm just seeing myself waving and screaming, doing my thing. I, I'm never having an in-person meeting again. Here's Linda Welby jumping in. Linda, I would tell the guys, I'm like, I'm never leaving my house again. I'm more productive. <laughs> yeah. I'm so much more productive at home. Then go. I don't have to drive places. I don't have to I waste know. money on gas. I don't have to go. Now to you drive to LA for meetings. Yeah, really? Yeah. This whole week, Sunday was Alex's wedding. Monday, Browner took controls of the show. I had I had my sighted people in town this week. We had like six meetings as the week went on. I had to go to L.A. yesterday to do a remote broadcast. I had a sighted board meeting yesterday morning, which is why I missed the show. Alex, I like you. I'm ready to drop, man. Like this has been a crazy week. And it all started with your wedding on Sunday at Linda Welby's house. Linda, I was just telling Alex how emotional you and I were. During oh the wedding, gosh. like like two proud parents looking at this young kid. That's exactly kid. what it was. That's exactly. We were both like, you know, had each other's arms. We're like, our baby's getting married. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got a little teary eyed. Yeah. I got a lot teary eyed, actually. I, I got really overwhelmed when I saw through a window. Mar was just getting her fo- being photographed and she was in this certain light and she had all the white. Oh, my God. She looked like an angel and i was like Ugh. and then i went down and there's alex all handsome in his suit it was just beautiful it really was a great wedding and, and linda i'll tell you i, I, I don't even sick. think i sent linda that trailer i sent you guys oh really 
I, th- oh. I, th- I just oh. remembered. I got to send Linda, it to Linda. You got to see Alex is what is uh, it? The, the, the people who did the video for Alex's wedding. They've created like a, I'd say a 60 to 90 second trailer, like a movie trailer. Oh, you know? and I it, need to see that. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. Don't watch it while we're on. Cause you'll start crying right away. I was, okay. I, I was like yesterday. I was yesterday. I like watch this thing and I started whimpering, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because, because there's this one part where Alex says to Mar, you know, gosh, I swear to you, I'm getting goosebumps. He says to her, so romantic. He says, you know, Mar, um, so many decisions in our lives led to us meeting at on the border you know alex growing up in oxnard makes this decision to come to san diego state and then gets this job inside 1090 and we happen to be doing these remotes at on the border in mission valley and then for mar you know i don't really know all the history like i know alex's but for her to have a job in on the board these decisions that we made put us together in that moment on planet Mm -hmm. earth and now he says to her and now we get to go forward making our decisions together, you know? And it was like so beautiful. It was so romantic. It really know? was. I mean, well done. Well done. What is friend. so funny, Browner? What is so funny? You're funny, dude. You're just funny. That's Because Browner was next to you when you were crying. Yeah, I was, I was, he has I that was, memory. I don't have that memory. Yeah, dude. I sat through the whole thing and watched this guy just like cry, man. On my left, I'm sitting like. So it's me, Rachel, and then it's him. And I think he did that purposely. So I wouldn't hear him crying. I would just see him <laughs> crying. So, and he blamed Rachel. Right. Yeah. So Rachel's in between us. And Linda, who had to add extra seats, is over to my right. And she's grabbing tissues like a, a, a <laughs> infant just like throwing them out of the box. She's just taking it. Like, oh. If you noticed, I put the tissues right beside me. They were supposed to be for everyone. But I put them right yeah, beside me. Uh, uh, everybody else, use your hands. Use your hands. <laughs> and then I don't know how Browner actually got to focus because he was in a particular seat that was very conducive to me. Anytime I needed something and I needed extra hands, I'm like, John, Browner, come on, let's go. Hey, let's hey. go. Get up. And he's like up and he's down and he's up Whoa. and he's carrying and he's moving. And I was like, <laughs> so thank like, you. Move this. I know, and okay. I did that to you too, Scott, but mostly John and I was. Uh, I just needed to, things done and I needed them done fast. So please and thank you now. <laughs> I'll tell you, Linda, um, I really do think that as beautiful of a wedding as it was and, you know, all the sincere words that Alex shared with Mar and Mar shared with Alex and the guy who was the efficient uh, of the wedding, you know, did a great job. You know, he's not some professional stand-up comedian or, or professional radio host where he's accustomed to speaking in front of large crowds. You know, he did a great job. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I just thought it was really awesome. Um, but I will say this, and Alex, I don't know how you feel about it. Um, part of what made the day and the wedding itself so special was that it happened in your house. And it's not just because your house is beautiful, and it's not just because it has one of the most bomb views in all of San Diego. It's just that it's your house, you know? So, like, as much as it's got this insane view and as much as it's a beautiful house, oh, it's, thank you. it's your house. And the fact that you and Austin and your family hosted the wedding i thought alex i don't know how you feel but i thought that sort of added to the uh the romantic nature of the actual ceremony what'd you think grande oh everybody and myself included i think well everybody told me they were very comfortable there i was like i was like well that's because linda you know like you're just such an open person and welcoming person i felt uh i was only feeling anxiety in that moment but i felt uh i felt very very comfortable there and I know Mar did too. So we really, really, really appreciate it. But everybody was just like, um, I think the word stupid was used a lot. Like, this is just <laughs> a stupid place. Like, like, look at this. And I was like, I know, I know. You walk in there and you're just like, what the, you know what I mean? So yeah, well, and, uh, it did feel like very homey and, and, and open and, and receptive. That's for sure. Well, that, that's great. That's what we were going for. We were happy to do it. And, and I thought to myself, and, you know, because it's selfish on my part too, because now I'm kind of part of the program for years to come because we got married in Chicago and my husband wanted to do it like not married, but we got engaged. What's the big building at the top there with the restaurant? Sears Tower. The Sears Tower wanted to have dinner there. I picked a very hip trendy restaurant instead. And he just wanted to go with the flow. It, they tore it down uh, like a year later. So we had no, you know, so now I'm, I said, well, geez, we're not going anywhere. So you know, one year anniversary comes up. We have a little dinner celebration mm-hmm. at the house. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. where it all happened. 
You yeah, know, I think that's sure. exciting. That's cool. Alex, I don't know if you know this, but one of the coolest parts was when the ceremony itself ended and then everybody was going to stand around and drink champagne and celebrate you guys. And then everybody was going to take pictures with this insane background of all of downtown San Diego and North Island, this incredible view from Point Loma. Sorry, Linda, I'm not exactly giving out your address, but I mean, it's just, you know, people have seen <laughs> some pictures. Um, but while this is happening, um, there was no like um, wedding staff per se to like clean up. So me and John and Linda and your friends, we all started folding chairs and stacking chairs and making space so that the party could. But no one, no one like told us this in advance. Like, hey, guys, right. when this is done. It. it just started happening. It, it, and it was organic. And, and that's because no one it, there wasn't a lot of pretense. You know, there wasn't a lot of like, um, I'm not freaking cleaning up chairs. I'm a, I'm a guest. Yeah. I'm not clean. Everybody wanted to chip in and help. Like everybody mm -hmm. felt like a part of it is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, I, it was a well run machine and, and to the level of professionalism, like his Alex's whole family and Mars family between the charcuterie cones and the flowers. And they just showed up. And then even after you guys left to go get the pictures, I had like all the, the wedding party was still hanging out. And I said, well, where do you guys got to go, go, you know? And they're like, no, oh, we need to help you clean. We need, I said, it's clean. I don't see anything, you know, all we have to do is tomorrow the guys are going to show up. We're going to move the furniture back in and we're good to go. So it was just beautiful and perfect. And I loved, oh my gosh, I loved every minute. I did think uh, Browner's, uh, you know, perv goggles were a little weird at a wedding, but. Did you hear about this, Alex? <laughs> have you heard about no. this? Oh yeah. No. So Browner, Browner is wearing these Ray-Ban glasses, right? Okay. No, they're and, perv glasses. Right. And you can see oh, that I he's know got it. these okay. two cameras on either side of the glasses. Yeah. Right? And so he's telling me and Austin about these glasses and I'm like fascinated and fixated on these glasses. Yeah. I'm like, give them to me. Let me have them. <laughs> so I put on Browner's glasses and I'm mm -hmm. walking around and he's recording everything that I'm seeing, you mm -hmm. know, and he actually showed the video on Monday on the show. Cause I walked oh, out really? to look. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I walked out to look at the view of, of from Linda's house. Oh, it is these glasses. I, I mean, they're so cool. And Linda okay. calls them perv glasses, but well, they, no, no, no. Let me just say, so John pulls me. Aside. I said, they are very actually, pervy when you think about it. Right. I made the comment first. I said, John, you look, you, you clean up. Well, you look sharp. I like the, I like the glasses. And he's like, Oh, check these out. And he's telling me all about them. And there's a camera in here and a Bluetooth. And, and you do this and you do that and you can record anything. And then I just stood there and looked. I said, that is the perviest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and he's just, I said, I mean, they can be used for. And then someone said that it, they're, the light goes on, right? So you mm -hmm. can see. Supposed when to really see on. it though. But yeah. if I'm somebody weird, the first thing I'm going to think of is how do I disable that light? Mm -hmm. and now i can just go anywhere but um but you can turn fabulous glasses nonetheless i hope you use them for good <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah 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 always 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 i hope your husband uses his for good too i yeah. know he wants some yeah i, yeah. I do too i want him too. that would be a dope thing for your husband though like if he wears them during a show like what that's what he was saying to? yeah that'd be dope well yeah. here's the thing this is this is alex these are the things you're going to learn as you go because you're newly married <clears throat> but we were standing there and, and weddings bring out the romantic in people. You know what I mean? Mm. Like <clears throat> as a couple, you get like, you're a little more handholdy and huggy and kissy and dancey. And so John's talking about these glasses and Austin looked at me with this big sparkle in his eye. And he said, <laughs> I want to get a pair of those. And I said, well, okay. And then, you know, I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. I was like, well, okay. And then he said, these would be perfect for band overboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wants so to like, be in the back yep. playing the drums so that everybody mm -hmm. can see what his view is, you know? Yeah. Right. And here you are thinking dirty. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Years, so right. that's where those things right. are going. Who, who really the, should have the perv anywhere. glasses? You or Austin perv? <laughs> oh, he just poked his head in. Um, he'll, he'll have the perv glasses for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. But, but cool glasses nonetheless. I mean, mm -hmm. um, and then I heard you had an outage though. Like there was a little, because the reception oh, it wasn't was a little, awesome, yeah. great venue, mm -hmm. dancing was insane. It was so much fun. My favorite part was when Cousin Nancy took out the glow sticks when no one had taken them out. No, so no, no, like not, nope, nope, that nope. Was, that was Browner. Nope, nope. Don't not, you blame that, though, no. Nope. Like Cousin Nancy did that first. <laughs> no, wrong. It wasn't Cousin Nancy. It wasn't. It wasn't Cousin Nancy. It was Rachel. 
Rachel oh. is one of those mm -hmm. people that likes to dose an entire party. So she'll walk around with gummies and she'll be like trying to push gummies on everybody because she wants the whole party to get all gummied out. So she found the glow sticks and she started passing them out to everybody. And then the next thing you know, we all had these glow sticks and we were all doing a whole bunch of dances. And Alex, you had like a whole set of like Mexican music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that we were all jamming out to some Los yeah. Bukis all up in it. No oh. Los Bukis, I don't think. But uh, uh, yeah, Bobby, who I thought killed it because he doesn't know Spanish music. But I still hired him anyways because I think Bobby's a vibe. I think Bobby is. He like, totally is. I think Bobby <clears throat> just would fits in exactly with what we were going for. And uh, I made a very, very, very specific curated wedding Mexican playlist for him, but it's not just Mexican music. It would be like cumbia, like salsa, whatever the hell it was. It's very so. Every song I picked, I ran through like uh, at least five people. Like, what do you guys think about this playlist? And it was approved by multiple people. So it's a very curated playlist. I think I could sell that thing, but I was like, now this is music wedding edition. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got a great video of everybody just dancing. Me too. And, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't air any videos on the show, by the way, Alex. Just so you oh, know, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, I do think in that wedding trailer, it looks like the videographers got a lot of dancing shots because in mm -hmm. the trailer, they had they were in there. I didn't even realize they were in there. Yeah, um, all up in it. Yeah, they were great. Like the video. And that was a really cool they... game that you played too, about with the shoes. Oh yeah. The shoes. yeah. Oh, that was yeah. great. That yeah, was that great. was all Mars' idea. I had no idea how to play at all until we started playing uh but that was all mars idea we didn't want she didn't want to do any traditional like bouquet toss garter well garter would be impossible but like we didn't she didn't want to do any of that stuff she wanted to do something different we wanted to do something just totally casual well you, you know, totally nailed it and and even when you were sitting like i sent you some pictures earlier you were sitting in that light on the stool because i was yeah. on your side mm -hmm. and i looked and the light hit you in a certain way i looked at us and i'm like i have and scott too we remember standing there i said i've never seen him more happy in my oh dude life. right i know and then there's a picture that Al alex actually posted this on his instagram and it's him and mar and it's like everybody in their immediate family and there's this big high-rise building behind them in downtown san diego and this incredible moonlight that was shooting down and I'm oh. like, wow, just look what a beautiful yeah. picture that is. It was, it was great, hilarious, man. too, because Mar took the tiara from the photo booth and walked <laughs> around with it for a while. And I was like, that's very Padiva of you. Way to go. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> on brand. Well, oh, dude, yeah. Alex, wait, you had to see. I took the crown that was in the from the photo booth and yeah. I was sitting on like the Vespa out in the lobby and, yeah. I was taking, and I was taking Hey King pictures, you know. So I've got all these pictures yeah. of me with the crown like, Hey King, you know. So that was well, awesome. I do have to say we did a group shot and this was, we were, we had, because after you guys all left, uh, myself and Austin and, and Rachel and Scott and Browner went downstairs to the bar and watched a little bit of the game and had some drinks before we went over. So we, we were feeling okay by yeah. the time we got there. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the photo booth and did that. And the, there's a strip and there's one shot at the end, Rachel, because Rachel is, she's a gamer. She's a party girl. She's a gamer. And she did a certain pose in the next day. I had it up on my, one of my, um, on your mantle shelves. Yeah. Yeah. And one, uh, and Alex's best man walked by and he goes, Oh, look at Rachel. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rachel pulled out the girls essentially for the, did. for the picture. And by the he way, quite enjoyed that photo. Yeah. And mm -hmm. let me tell you something. Rachel, and Linda together, just trouble city. <laughs> like me and Austin were like, oh, these two together. Oh, yeah. no. it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was awesome. And I'll tell you one thing that we haven't we haven't mentioned from the wedding. So um, Alex's best man has uh, something to say, like a speech. And um, Mars' sister spoke as well. And again, they're not professionals. They're not they're not accustomed to speaking in front of large crowds. So so Rachel's like nudging me. She's like, get up there and say something. You need to say something. And I'm going, relax. Okay. <laughs> I don't need to say anything. Trust me. There is a microphone. There's Browner. At some point, Browner will be holding the microphone <laughs> and will speak on my behalf. You know yeah. what I mean? And on behalf of the show. And Browner yeah. grabbed that microphone and like the total pro that he is. Just had the whole crowd sitting right there in the palm of his hand. And I said to her, I go, see, I didn't need to say anything. Browner has this thing handled. No problem. No problem. So it's funny because I was putting my shoes on back on when Browner <laughs> started talking. And I was like, damn, Browner's loud. 
Like I could just hear Browner. I had no idea he was on the mic. I just thought he was talking near me. <laughs> and like, yeah, I just thought he was talking near me. And I was like, man, he's being like really direct right now. And I, I put my, I tie my shoe and I turn around like, oh, he's got the mic. Like this dude is doing a speech. And I was like, all right, here we go. I knew he wouldn't do anything bad. And I knew it would be funny. I, but what, but everybody came up to me and was like, dude, what Browner said was so awesome and so great. And I was like, I agree. Like I, it was, it was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, it really Mar was. loved it. I know Mar loved it. And Mar didn't yeah, want yeah. like any, like any really, you know, like cousin Nancy wanted to, go, she was the professional heckler of the night. I was like, you don't get a mic today. You're good. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, was lit, dude. Yeah. yeah dude, so I, love was lit. I love cousin Nancy and love her cousin husband. Nancy in the sparkly dress. Oh, yeah. she is so great. She I love them. I, I loved her. I loved her husband. I loved Mars' sisters. It was great to see Mama Padilla. I mean, it was oh great to gosh. see Mars' mom. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just, it was a very, uh, it just felt very family-like. And it didn't, I didn't feel like, oh, I'm on the outside. Of it. I felt like just as much in the middle as I, as, you know, as could be. I, it was a beautiful event. It really was. And, uh, and Linda, I just wanted to have you on today because um, without the venue, it would have been a beautiful event, no doubt. But the venue just added to it so much. Hey, Linda, I have a question. What are you and Austin doing tonight? Um, nothing. I don't think. Because I'm telling you right now, like me and Rachel, we're like Linda and Austin are like our BFFs. Like we want to be with them more. <laughs> Ready uh -oh. to do something? Well, I do have an early flight in the morning, so I don't oh, know yeah? how deep we can go, but we'll oh, see. Yeah? All right. Well, I'll talk yeah. to you off air because uh, yeah. traveler now. We're coming down that way tonight because my daughter is going to some concert like by the sports arena that I got to drop her off at. And then I got to pick her up. So we're going to come down and have dinner oh, in Point Loma. Anyway. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll get I'll you some of them sliders, bro. Oh, dog. For sure. For Rock sure. a pair of perv glasses. Yeah. You know, that's the <laughs> truth. You know, yeah. it is. Hey, Linda, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Yeah, you guys. So, so much fun. And maybe I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Thanks again, Absolutely. Linda. And did you send me that, that, the trailer, Alex? Yeah, I texted it to you. Okay, awesome. All right, guys. All right, cool. All right, Linda, we'll see you soon. Hey, I just Bye. want to remind everybody before we hit this break, uh, Jason Lawhead's going to come up, and Jason will actually jump in and we'll talk a bunch of sports stuff uh, as Jason helps us finish off the week that he's helped us start. Reminder, everybody, this weekend, if you're thinking about anything related to real estate, you want to look around, you want to go to some open houses, you want to see some listings, call our man Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. His website is mountaintrustrealty.com. Never make a move in real estate without first talking to Gary Cooper. He has helped literally thousands of great friends over the 20 plus years of our relationship. And he can help you too. Even in these very tumultuous times, mountaintrustrealty.com, 858-376-1299 for Gary Cooper. Jay Law going to finish off the week with us next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios here on Kaplan & Crew. All right, great friends. Friday afternoon, Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. So Grande's back. Browner's here. It is Friday. Happy Veterans Day to everybody who is celebrating. Happy Veterans Day to all the families out there who have had veterans as part of their family. Salute to my dad, who's probably today in our YouTube chat, uh, who was in the United States Air Force. That's why I was born on an Air Force base when my dad was still in. So uh, happy Veterans Day to everybody who is celebrating. And thank you, everybody, for your service today. Uh, a lot of people take the day off. I wanted us to be on the air today just because Alex was gone Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I needed the day off yesterday. This is our first and only show of the week where we're all back together. Everything goes back to normal next week. Uh, but Jason Lawhead, Alex, I'll have you know, and Browner and Lawhead, you know, mm -hmm. these guys work together you know, every week. They do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights here on 1090 from 6 to 7. But um, Lawhead filled in. Browner moved over a chair and produced and directed and edited and did all the things that you have to do. And I said, you know, Jay law, you got to finish off the week with us, man, because we talked wedding in the opening segment. We talked wedding with Linda in the second segment, and we're actually going to talk a little bit of some sports stuff with Jay law. Who's stepping in. What's going on today, Jay. What's up, man? Five days. I don't know if I've done a five full. No, when you took off, I did a five fuller. So, uh, yeah, man, my arm's getting tired, but I still got a couple innings left in me. Yeah. Hey, what did I miss mm -hmm. yesterday on the show? Because I saw a tweet, Alex, about Steve Young saying, like, ripping the Chargers. What did I miss on that? Yeah, he was up in KMBR because it's the Chargers at the Niners on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And Steve, they asked him, you know, hey, what do you think about, you know, the Chargers? And he's like, well, they're wasting Justin Herbert. 
Like that guy is a top echelon quarterback and they don't know what to do with him. They have no plan. I think what was his exact line? He's like, they're like the Cardinals where they just kind of improvise except with less of a plan. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, damn, dude. He's like, they don't got the right weapons for him. They don't have an identity for him. They are just wasting that kid's career. Well, maybe uh, the Chargers should uh, hire Steve Young as their head coach the way the Colts just hired Jeff Saturday. They just pulled him off the TV set. Maybe they should hire Steve Young. Did you see the rant Joe Thomas, former Browns offensive lineman, went on on the Saturday hiring this morning on the NFL? That's I that did. morning NFL show. They're in Munich, Germany no. for the no. game. I didn't yeah. see it. I it was an it. interesting take. I mean, he was he basically, you know, uh, criticized the whole move and how it disrespects all the people that have worked in football as coaches and how long it's taken, what, what it takes from their lives. And he basically, I mean, wow, I couldn't believe, like he said, you know, you just don't go hire your drinking buddy because you think it's going to end. Uh, I mean, he said that out loud and then he went on this, you know, pretty good take. It was, a, it was a strong take backing like what it, what the life of a, of just not even a head coach, but just any coach that commits themselves how you just can't just show up for that. Um, yeah, you know, it is a good take because, um, you know, just just here's, uh, you know, a thought like, okay, look, Jim Irsay knows Jeff Saturday. But I mentioned it to you guys uh, earlier in the week when I looked at their coaching staff, there's John Fox, who's a former NFL head coach. There's Gus Bradley, who's a former NFL head coach. And, and those are two former head coaches that are currently on your staff. And if you're going to have somebody just be an interim coach to get you to the end of the season – wouldn't it help to have somebody who's got some experience and to pull a guy off TV who now has to come in? I'm sure all the coaches are offended because they're like, are you for real? Like we've been out here working our asses off for all this time. And then he has to start juggling the coaching staff. Who's going to be the play caller? Like the assistant quarterback coach is getting promoted yeah. to the play caller. And to your point about what Joe Thomas was saying, look, I always look at my buddy, Alex Van Pelt, man, that guy's been a, a coach in professional coaching for 20 years, coached in the NFL Europe league, coached at one point for the green Bay Packers quarterbacks and receivers in the same year, two different positions at the same time, um, has been an offensive coordinator, um, has called plays and is just working at 52 years old, um, making great money, but would like to elevate to a head coach one day. And you can't get a shot. And Jeff Saturday is pulled off the TV set. And by the way, the Colts are playing the Raiders this weekend. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be a crazy story if the Colts actually beat the Raiders? Yeah, I know. I, I mean, that would... lose by, I hope they lose by fifty. <laughs> everybody, everybody is so on their on their high horse about this Jeff. I haven't had a chance to talk about it. Everybody's so on their high horse with Jeff Saturday, and so offended that they hired Jeff Saturday. Um, y'all, y'all know who their quarterback's been since Andrew Luck? Duct tape. Yeah, that's been their quarter. This is the most premier class of quarterbacks coming into the nfl next year in a very long time and i'm telling you like really good guys that are available this is brilliant by jim mercy because i get to yeah i get to hire my drinking buddy even though i don't drink anymore i'm in recovery i am i get to hire my good friend and if this doesn't work that's kind of the plan here i don't want it to work i want a top pick i'm gonna get a top pick and what am i gonna do bring john fox in what's he gonna do what's he gonna do win two games win one game Bring Gus Bradley in, who's been fired everywhere he's been, and win what? Win one game with Sam Ellinger? Like, let's think big picture here. Like, what do I have to lose? Let's swing for the fences. Who knows what I got in Jeff Saturday? Everybody's so offended. No, by no, it. I, I and I understand if you're in the, if you are a coach in the league that's, that's been dying point. to get a game. Yeah. Sure, I get it. But people outside of that, if you're not a head, if you're not a coach trying to be a head coach, I don't get why people are no, so no. offended. But, but why, why? Well, I'll start off with people are offended on this front. Where's the Rooney rule? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but hold on. Time out on the Rooney rule. It's it's an interim guy In season. who's just going to try and get you through the end of the season. But Ursay's like, I hope this works out and it's long term. So there I'm not go. interviewing any minorities. I'm there already hiring go. my buddy. So there's Where's the there, penalty mm -hmm. for that. So people are offended by that part of it. People are offended on behalf mm -hmm. of coaches. Me personally, Alex, I'm not offended by it. I eat this kind of stuff up. I mean, what a story. Take the guy from TV who won a Super Bowl with your team, who is Peyton Manning's center, and just, just insert him 
to me, it's a great science experiment. Let's see what happens. I'm not offended. I'm just really curious. But yeah. I do understand, J-Law, uh, what Joe Thomas was right. saying, you know? Yeah, I'm not offended either way. I'm not rooting it for or against Jeff Saturday. I don't have any personal acts against Jim Ursay. Um, the thing is, is it's just an interesting perspective, and you're seeing a lot more of the criticism gaining that traction. It's more of the, you know, um, let's say the Rooney rule was already perfect and things were happening the way it was designed, and everybody was happy with the way that this would still be something that is offensive to the coaching culture, whether everything was, you know, was, was laid out perfectly. So that's the interesting part. I think that bad owners get, I think bad owners get covered up by hall of fame players a lot more oh, than sure. we think. Jim Irsay being one of them. I think he's a bad Always owner has been. who happened mm -hmm. to have Peyton Manning and they sucked for luck. You yeah, remember yeah. that? They sucked for luck and Andrew Luck couldn't get out of there fast yeah. enough. Yeah. Like he was like, I will retire in my prime because they don't know what they're doing here. They can't protect me. They didn't give me any weapons. I'm out. Yeah. Under Jim, like Jim Irsay is a bad owner. Under Jim who... Irsay, <laughs> outside of Peyton Manning, that franchise has been an utter disaster. An utter disaster. So I don't really – I've never been a Jim Irsay fan, especially when he got caught with all that, all that drugs and all that money, and he just kept being an NFL owner. After that, I really was through with him in general. And this, you know, this just continues to show you who the NFL from a hiring perspective is. I've said this a hundred times. The white owners hire people who look like them, who sound like them, and who act like them. And so Jim Ursay hired Jeff Saturday because that's his friend. He's in close proximity to the decision maker. It's Jim Ursay kicking quarterbacks out and bringing quarterbacks in. Like these are his decisions. He's Jerry Jones, but without the without the titles. That's all it, it is. Yeah. He's and it's Jerry so, Jones without the titles. He medals. He, well, he's, he's got one. Wrong. He's, yeah, he's got one. He's got one. But the funny thing is, is we go back to this Rooney rule, whether it's interim and he can slide that way or if this is going to be his guy in the offseason. It's funny because he won a Super Bowl with a black coach and the other one he went to was with a black coach and he fired Caldwell. So he hasn't been right since he's fired Caldwell. And that's going to be something that might, that. that might blow up in his face when time comes to, to really name your head coach down the yeah. line. And he, he defended himself like by that, but like, what do you mean Rooney rule? I've had, yeah. I've had two black guys as my coach. I mean, that's, that's kind of no, what his, his answer goes. was. Yeah, well, time to go back to that because yeah. that's the only success that's where, you ever that's had. How it worked, right? Exactly. Hey, he also, Jim called. He also right. fired Jim Caldwell. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. Winning Thank record. you. Because he's right, an so, idiot. <laughs> so Jason Lawhead is here, fill, uh, kind of hanging out this segment because he filled in all week long, and I thought we really wanted to have Jay help us finish off the week. Uh, for those of you that are just getting here, I do want to talk a little bit more NFL, and I'd love to get to some basketball stuff while Jay's still here. Uh, for one minute, I just want to say this weekend, if you're thinking about a new car. I want you to think Penske San Diego, and the website is Penske, P-E-N-S-K-E, PenskeSanDiego.com. And the reason I want to mention that to you is, is because we've worked with Mazda Escondido for all these years, and they are a Penske dealership. Me and Browner did that really great appearance that day where we had the Padres and uh, the Pod Squad and the Padres Traveling Museum. We had them at Lexus San Diego that day. They're a Penske dealership, and there are 12 Penske dealerships in San Diego. And here are the brands that they have in town. Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, Mercedes, and Toyota. So pretty much any brand that you might be considering, Penske San Diego's got it. So make your life simple. Before you go out and you're doing the hand-to-hand the -hand combat, just go online, PenskeSanDiego.com. Shop PenskeSanDiego.com. All right, um, guys, this whole conversation about Jeff Saturday started because Steve Young criticized the Chargers. Chargers and Niners is the Sunday night game. Um, if the Niners are for real, if they're going to be an upper echelon team in the NFC, they've got to beat. I, I don't know that I'll call the Chargers an upper echelon team, but they're sort of beyond the, the first wave of Buffalo and Kansas City. And maybe you might throw Baltimore in there. Um, but if the Chargers go on the road and beat the Niners, you got to think the Chargers have recovered. And you got to think the Niners at four and four going into the game are not a real contender. Who you guys like in the game? Niners. Well, I, I said the joke yesterday. We had Eric Williams on. 
I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo will throw more than eight passes tomorrow. I think they will be a Debo Samuel Christian McCaffrey show because the Chargers can't stop. For the, I hate to saying, but they literally cannot stop a nosebleed. They have a terrible run defense. They just lost their best run stopper. They don't have Joey Bosa. They just cut their former first round pick, who's also a defensive tackle. Like they are a mess. What defensively. was the story on that? On that the uh, the cut. Wh- who's the kid they just cut? Um, because they just read the 2019 what's, pick. They say. I just read Jerry that. Hillary. What's his name? Jerry Tillery, yeah, who went to Notre Dame and who has just not been good. Yeah, and they just let him go. Yeah, yeah, and and it yeah. was kind of a weird thing too because Tom Telesco's like, ah, you know what? We think it's best for him. It's best for us, dude. It's it's the it's the ninth game of the season, and you're letting go of a former first round draft choice, and and you can't stop the run. Stop I mean, drafting from body. Notre Dame. How about that? That's there's, a there's more to that. There's pro- there I has to be. There's more to that. Has there's, to be. There's, there's, there's no way they let. You keep those guys just because it's embarrassing when they have to go. That's probably that's part of the Raiders situation. They keep letting go first and second round picks, just cutting them. And people are like, what the hell are y'all doing? But Dude, this two, seems like there's way more to this. Than 2019 that. is when this guy came into the league. All right, so I, I'm I'm with you. I, I like the uh, the Niners. The Chargers allow 146 yards on the yeah, ground. McCaffrey's going to eat them up. Hey, I'll tell you another game that's interesting. You know who's worst? The Bears, oh. the Lions. You know who leads the league in rushing? That is it. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. We're talking yeah, defense. You, right no, now. I mean, listen, you throwing dirt. I'm, you, I'm throwing praise. <laughs> hey, listen, real quick, because I know we'll never get to hey. any of this stuff while Jason's here. Hey, um, the Vikings and the Bills this weekend is an interesting game because nobody knows for sure if Josh Allen is going to play. The Vikings, Alex, your team has gone very quietly seven and one. I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to the Vikings, but mm-hmm. um, after the Bills lost last week to the Jets and the Vikings coming in should be fully healthy. And I, I don't know if Josh Allen's going to play, and I wouldn't play him if I were the Bills. I'd I wouldn't be worried about this game. I'd be worried about the playoffs. I think the Vikings are going to go into Buffalo and win. Oh, look at that face. They they very well could. Look and, at the face you know, of the Vikings fan. Look at him. He's like, ooh, ooh. They very well could. Come on. The Case Keenum revenge game. I've watched Vikings football my whole life. If they win this game with Josh or without Josh Allen, I would be very surprised if the Vikings pull this game out. I know that they're not even favored. <laughs> they're not even favored ah. the bills are favored by three and a half right now. i know it's not official and that line might change it might get taken off the board if they switch to case keenum but i don't know man i have watched a lot of vikings football especially this year uh they're sus as the kids say mm. they are a very sus seven and one they but difference from last year they were zero and eight in one possession in one score games and this year they're like seven and oh so they Kevin O'Connell has showed them how to win close games. So I I just I would not bet money on the Vikings. I think a lot of people are are very much heavy if if Josh Allen don't play. I don't know, man. Dude, I Case mean, Keenum and Stephon Diggs, right? Weren't wasn't that yep. the, the combination? That was the mini the Minneapolis Miracle. Right. Yep. And now they're both playing for the Buffalo Bills against the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. Browner, your team, the Bears this weekend against my Detroit Lions. <laughs> Come on, Lions! After the big win last week for the Lions, this is, I, like I said, I told I said this on the show yesterday. I'm gonna repeat this again. I I said this. Justin Fields is gonna be the next Steve Young, and this is the march. I'm telling you, I'm I'm saying it right now. This is the march to the playoffs for the Chicago Bears, led by Justin Fields, who, if they do make the playoffs, will be MVP this year's Write playoffs. This year's yep. playoffs. Yeah, three Look and at six. The- Look at the standings. Look around. Yeah. Look around the standings. I'm, I'm looking and, at the seven and one Vikings. Mm-mm. And no, no, yeah, they're they're one in five in their last six games. What are you look talking at this, about? Look at look at who we've played, <laughs> and look at who we're about to play. Look at how we're playing, dude. The we've Lions been just the, beat the Packers. We the Packers are terrible. Yeah, but we've, so are the Bears. We've been the best offense in the league the last four weeks. Come get some. Come get, Come, get Come get some. Come get some. Come get some. Hey, Jay Law, our Cleveland Browns. You got a lot of hours. Yeah, I'm. I'm on the. <laughs> I'm on the Lions because of of hard knocks, and I'm the only Dan Campbell fan there is in the country. Last one left. And uh, Jay Law, Mrs. our Browns against even. the Dolphins, coming off a bye. We we desperately need the Browns to win this game, Jay. Huge game for the Browns to do anything if they're going to do anything. I mean, this is it. These last couple of weeks, uh, they lost some games they should have won. Then they went out and obviously pulled out the big win against Cincinnati. Um, So this is huge because um, if they're going to have any success with when Watson comes back against this division, um, Houston, Texas game, two weeks. 
So, um, <clears throat> you know, that that's going to this is the, this is the kind of game, right? Like, you know, uh, this is a big win on your schedule uh, right here. And you got to have some of those if you're going to be a playoff team, no matter who your starting quarterback is. You got to have those wins where they went, well, man, you know, they beat Miami, they beat Cincinnati. Like, you got to have those because you already lost, you know, that Chargers game that that would have been one of those games that you could have pointed game. to, you know, a Jets team now. Yeah. I mean, early on, you just thought you lost to a terrible Jets team. Now you look on, uh, you know, on paper and you go, hey, you know, so there's games that the Browns left out there on the table. There's no doubt. Um, and uh, they've got to they've got to make up for a couple of those losses with this win. I don't I think if they don't beat Miami at this point, it's just kind of survival to their best record at the end of the season. I think this is going to kind of tell a lot about what they can ev even do with Watson coming into the lineup. So, you know, go Browns. But does no. Tua get yes. any MVP love? It. Yes, he does. does. He deserve it. Why not? He has the fifth. He has the fifth most touchdowns in the NFL. He has mm -hmm. the highest quarterback rating in the NFL. He has a higher mm -hmm. completion percentage than Patrick Mahomes in the NFL. Yes, he does. Uh, if he if he leads if he leads the Dolphins to a one or two seed, the you don't think MVP he gets on that team is Tyreek Hill. I know it's Tyreek Hill, but that's not how the NFL works. It this look this year it will because and first of all the word around Tua doesn't give him credit. They give Tyreek Hill more credit on that team than they give Tua. Like just listen to people talk about. It. I don't know. Tyreek Hill will get the MVP. If the Dolphins finish in first place in the AFC, yeah, maybe I don't know. I, if I Cooper think... Cup didn't do it, if Cooper Cup didn't do it last year, Tyree gained doing Look at it this year. His numbers are going to be. He won't have more catches. His yards and his touchdowns will be higher. Yeah, but I I think I'm kind of with Alex here in that you know it's a quarterback league, right. you know, and and so the quarterback even, make like it, last year even... last year Stafford was still a, a betting more betting favorite than Cooper Cup was exactly which makes no sense because people makes no but sense. when Matthew Stafford went to the Rams they were saying Matthew Stafford's team not Cooper Cup's team day 1 since Tyreek Hill went there it's been they've been talking about Tyreek Hill Tyreek Hill Tyreek Hill can Tyreek Hill make Tua better he clearly has in addition with Jalen Waddle look at Tyreek Hill's numbers they're insane, yeah, no, they're great, but it's just not how it works. Oh, okay, Listen, I, I I think Tua will you. will get some consideration. Hey, I, I hear you. Hear Trust me, I hear hey, you. I've watched a lot of Dolphins games this year. I hear you. Tyreek is ridiculous. Last one, last one, real quick. The, the game in Germany, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers against the surprising Seattle Seahawks. I think I think I'm going to take the Bucks here. I I'm not really sure exactly why. I mean. I just have a feeling that the Bucs are going to start climbing out of the hole they've dug for themselves. What do you guys think? We got about a minute to go. What do you think? Not a good bet. It's not a good bet by you. No. Uh -huh. They're broken. That team's broke. I'm waiting for Gino to just fall off. Like Everybody right? is. Isn't everybody waiting for that? What do you think, Jay? Everybody is. Like, you know, I, I look, I mean, at the end of the day, the Buccaneers have a hard time scoring points. Even in the wins they've scratched out, they have a hard time putting points on the board. The Seahawks have not had that hard of a time. Obviously, Tampa Bay's defense is better than the one they usually face on an average, but – uh, we'll see who travels better, but I, I'm going to take those young Seahawks going into the Germany and uh, pulling it out. Well, I'd love to see the Seahawks continue to win because it puts pressure on the 49ers. It uh, makes the Rams look pretty bad. And I'll tell you, the Rams this weekend, when you think about what they've got going on against the Cardinals and without Stafford, who is not likely to play, um, the, the Rams could just it's get buried. They could game. get buried this weekend. They whoever, could fall to three and six. Whoever loses yeah. that game. That's right. They're officially hey, out. Jay, thank you so yeah, much man. for so much. filling in this week. You did a fantastic job, man. We so appreciate having you on the team, dude. And uh, and we'll look forward to having you back again real soon. Yeah, man, it'll be fun. Have a good one, guys. All right, you too, man. Uh, Jason Lawhead, who filled in this week, did a great job in Grande's absence after the wedding. We love you, Jay Law. We appreciate you, man. And I'm seriously considering coming to Vegas for those shows over Thanksgiving. All right, stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. One more segment to go. I want to get to all this college hoops things that are happening here in San Diego this weekend. Stay with us, everybody. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. Friday afternoon, final segment here on Kaplan and Crew. By the way, tonight we are on television, Channel 4 San Diego, 6.30 to 7.30. We're going to lead in to San Diego State versus BYU in college basketball tonight. So for those of you that are planning on watching San Diego State BYU on Channel 4 San Diego, part of the Cox Yearview Network, 6.30 to 7.30. We are on tonight, and we are coming to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. A lot to get to in this final segment. 
Browner, you had mentioned though that you had done something interesting last night. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I kind of I kind of glossed over. Excuse me. What's going on? What'd you do? Wakanda forever. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. What'd you do? Oh man. You talk about almost crying multiple times <laughs> in a movie. You you know how you cried at Ice's wedding? Multiple mm -hmm. times almost cried like that at Black Panther 2 last night. Oh, oh, last night was Black Panther too. Yeah, man, it was. It's it was phenomenal. It was. The, so is it was oh, last man. night like the opening night of the film or something? Yes, yes. Okay. Sold out. I forgot about that, dude. Me oh, too. I didn't oh even see Black Panther. One. I have been so dis because this is like uh, we got a bunch of Mexicans in this one too. I gotta go watch dude, this. It is really. It is yeah. absolutely beautiful. The way that they portray the Mayan history and the Mexican history in this film, and also with the culture of the African culture of Wakanda and they mush those two together. It the film's amazing. It's utterly amazing. Wow, man. Okay, cool, dude. So go see it. Go see was it. it. Cool. It was good, huh? I have I've I've seen mixed reviews. It, I I think anybody who sees this movie, they will like it. If if you don't like that movie, I would like to see what that person did like as a movie. Did you see uh or do you need to see Black Panther one to understand Black Panther two? I would uh, assume so. From a, no, because from a cultural perspective, everybody knows Chadwick Boseman died, mm -hmm. and so the tribute to him to start the film, which is awesome, you it kind of like a tribute to him, the man, more mm -hmm. than it is him, the actor, mm -hmm. and so it'll hit you in a different way. And I think that's what's part of got the film rolling is that they did that well while also telling the story of the next Black Panther. Like, it was phenomenal, man. Great acting. It amazes acting, me, it amazes me how, you, uh, how, how into these movies you are and how you always go on opening night. Oh, listen, I'm the guy in there. Like, I have my tickets weeks in advance. As soon as they were like, tickets available, I'm like, that one's mine. Wow. I'm All on right. the website now. Yeah. So good. I want to go tonight. Now, by the way, now, now you, last I'm going, night- I'm you went, going again, by the way. Now, you saw Black Panther Deuce last night, right? Mm -hmm. Now, are we? I have a question for you, Browner. Are we hanging out together again this weekend? Where at? Are we not going together Saturday night up to Oceanside to see Bill Hagen's band play? My man, listen. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. We've been over this. I, I. You talk about hitting O side. That's a little too high up for a player. Really? That's, that's too long, too, too that's deep a, north. Too too long, far. Listen, that's a long way for this Wakandan. It's a long yeah. way to go. <laughs> long. I know. I read. I saw like uh, Bernard Thompson was like, "Yo, dog, uh, Oceanside." Chula Vista, where I live. I don't know if I can go from Chula yeah, Vista all the way to Oceanside. That's an hour and a half right there. Bro, well, a, come on. That's an exaggeration. Come on. Stop. That's a hike, brother. That's a hike but, for me. But, Alex, we uh, we all got an offer from Bill Hagen on, uh, earlier this week. Hey, who wants my San Diego State versus San Jose State uh, college football tickets this Woo. week? And you right away were like, I'll take those. I'm that means that. you're not going to go see Keg the Band. But I want to just give a, a quick shout-out to my man Bill Hagen and Keg the Band. The hottest dad band in North County. Although last night, I will tell you guys, I stopped by this bar and uh, there was this band playing and they were called the Dad Bods. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> That's funny. The Dad Bods. Alex, can you play the Aren't promo? Aren't they in the promo? No, not the Dad Bods. The 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 uh, Brogos oh, are in the okay. promo. Alex, can you play the promo so we can uh, invite yeah. all the great friends who want to join us up in Oceanside on Saturday? North County's hottest dad band, Keg the Band, is back at it. It's a special warm-up show for their appearance at the Wonderfront Festival. Join them Saturday, November 12th at Poorhouse Oceanside with special guests, the Bro Goes. Hey, great friends. This is Scott Kaplan inviting you to another show brought to you by Kaplan and crew and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Join us in welcoming Keg the Band and their special friends, the Bro Goes, Saturday, November 12th, 8 p.m. at Poorhouse in Ocean inside poorhouse p-o-u-r poorhouse in oceanside hope to see all the great friends out there for another great keg the band show keg the band and the bro goes live at poorhouse 1903 south coast highway in beautiful south oceanside saturday november 12th shenanigans start at 8 p.m only seven bucks at the door be there Right. Be there. <laughs> this, this, this guy and his voices, man. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah, cool. I'm, so, looking at the, I'm looking at the map right now, man. Yeah. I, uh, it, uh, How far is Poor House from North Park? It says 21 minutes, but I don't believe that. Yeah, believe that. At 8 o'clock on a Friday? Uh, no, on a Saturday. 
Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, you might be. Oh, uh, uh, I don't make any promises because that doesn't look like something I'll back out of. Believe that. Believe that. Um, all right, listen, um, I, I would like to talk about a couple other things, and I would like to get to um, the highlight of the day. Before we do, hey, Alex, um, I got to tell you, you look so good at your wedding. You've lost so much weight. I see Dr. Max say from iThrive is sitting in our waiting room. Now he's in our waiting room. We're not in his waiting room. He's in our waiting room. L let us have a minute to talk to Dr. Max say about this incredible weight loss that uh, that is working for everybody, celebrities and, you know, big superstars like Grande himself. Dr. Max say is standing by. All right. So here's what I want to talk about at this time. Um, Alex, you have to tell everybody mm -hmm. how much weight you've lost with the I Thrive weight loss program. And the reason I want to bring it up is because because on Sunday at your wedding. I was saying to Rachel, I'm like, look at how much weight Alex has lost. Like it, it is, it's now to a point where it's very, very obvious and very noticeable how much weight you've lost. So tell us with, with the iThrive program, how mm -hmm. it's going. Uh, it's going really well the day after the wedding, after a weekend of, you know, trying to, you know, indulge myself and not care. Uh, I was down about 18, like 17, 18 pounds officially down uh as of monday and here's what's funny saturday night uh rehearsal i had a slice of pizza at our rehearsal mm -hmm. lunch i was mm -hmm. good and then went out to dinner with like cousin nancy and a bunch of friends i split a burger and i was like i'm full like no joke like i've never split a burger in my life who the hell splits a burger who am i scott kaplan like i'll <laughs> split a burger <laughs> So like, yeah, it's a, I think my appetite is, it's definitely more part of the norm now to, to eat lighter. And, and I can tell I'm, I'm full throughout the day. So yeah, about 17, 18 pounds a day after the wedding. I love it. And um, I'll tell you guys a quick story. I was last night, I ran into a friend of mine and she said to me, she goes, Hey, um, I'm about to get skinny. And I said, Oh really? What does that mean? She goes, I'm going on the I thrive program that I've heard you talk about on the radio. And I'm like, get out of here. Really? She's like, yeah. She goes, I'm getting skinny in the next two months. I guess she must think to herself, you know, through you know the holidays and uh, into the new year, she plans on losing a bunch of weight. Hey, Alex, 18 pounds in what? Like uh, eight, nine weeks. Like, yeah, 10, I think. Yeah. About 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Hey, if you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com and you click on the I Thrive logo, it's going to take you to the I Thrive MD.com website and you can read all about I Thrive Lean, a guaranteed weight loss program. And to discuss it further, here is Dr. Thomas Maxey from I Thrive, who we haven't had on the show for a few weeks. Dr. Maxey, what's going on, man? Oh, man. So many things. It's good to be back on. Happy to see you guys again. Yeah. Happy to have you here, man. So um, can you believe it? I mean, Alex, I say, can you believe it? I mean, you, you guys say it's guaranteed. It's fully <laughs> FDA approved, et cetera, et cetera. But Alex has lost like almost 20 pounds, dude. Yeah. You know, and I mean, th that's the crazy thing. We see so much weight loss happen, but it's still so exciting every time. And I feel so happy for everyone to really experience those benefits, start feeling better, notice that their clothes is fitting looser, you know, and just getting back into a place where they can move functionally and feel comfortable and do the things they need to do to uh, maintain that weight and get a better like lifestyle. Developing. So Al Alex has told me um, kind of off air, but, and Alex, I hope you don't mind me saying this on air, but it sounds like Mar, your now wife, I have to start calling her your wife, not your fiance anymore. Sounds like she wants in on this program now too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know what she wants to divulge here, but yeah, she wants it. She sees what it, she sees what it's doing for me. I think everybody sees what it's doing and, and she, she's like, I'll pay for this thing. And I was like, it's a dude, it's freaking, I mean, it's worth it. You know, like it really is worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doc, um, besides Alex, who has, you know, done this program for people who are watching and listening on the show, what other kinds of results are you seeing from just everyday people who are coming in? Yeah, I mean, it's like we're, we're seeing everyone from young to old who need help losing weight. Um, a few of our providers like Dr. Fry, she's lost enough weight to be down to like her quote unquote high school weight. And she wasn't uh, that big to begin with, you know, but she's lost lots of weight. She feels great. Uh, benefits are definitely noticeable for her overall. And we have lots of other people. Some guys, you know, I've had lose a ton of weight in the first week. I had one guy tell me 14 pounds week one. Just wow. because wow. he probably had so much inflammation and like gunk in his gut that 
was hanging around that doesn't get to process when you're eating a ton of food and putting alcohol in and doing all these things that doesn't give your gut a break. So slowing down and eating less and letting your body normalize to a new like metabolic process really helps optimize how we burn fat, how we store our sugars, how our whole system reacts to the foods that we're eating. And as Alex is seeing, you know, like you don't really need a whole burger to stay full and have enough nutrients in your body. You know, we're just kind of conditioned to it and our body's natural hormone signals and neurotransmitters tell us that we need to eat as much as we do, even though our body doesn't really need it. Hey doc, I have a question for you. Cause now that I've seen the success that Alex is having and we always promote to everybody, you know, you don't have to change your diet. You don't have to exercise more. It's a guaranteed weight loss program. Mm -hmm. um, I exercise every day, yeah. but I am the worst. My diet is the worst because when I get done eating, I'll look at my girlfriend's plate and see when she's done. And then I'll eat everything left on her plate. Yep. You know, same thing. Like if my kids, like my daughter, my 16 year old, if she's eating and she's done, I'm like, Oh, I'll have everything that's, that's left over. Yep. And it's just, it, it's, it's like, I'm a, I'm just a habitual overeater, you know? And I'm starting to think to myself now, cause I need to lose 15 pounds. I'm like, why don't I go on this and try it? And part of it is ego for me. Cause I'm mm -hmm. like, I know how to exercise. Yeah. I know how to eat right. I can lose this weight on my own. I don't need anything. I don't need any help. But the reality is, is I exercise every day, but my diet sucks. My discipline is, is way off. I'm thinking maybe I should try it too. Yeah. I mean, I think it could be a really good option for, you know, just it's like internal discipline almost. It helps balance your body to only need as much as it really needs. Because like I said, we're just so thrown off by the types of foods that we're eating that spike our blood sugar that tell us that it's like, oh, we can get more of this. We can store it all. We're going to use it later. Like we don't need that much. And the benefits that you get, even for someone like you, if you lost 15 pounds, you're going to have a significant less amount of inflammation. Your uh, lipid levels are going to go down, like your total cholesterol and triglycerides, your fasting blood glucose. So all sorts of benefits come along with it and helps you stay, quote unquote, younger for longer, too. The more weight you lose, the better your body's going to be able to recover and metabolize and detox. OK, but but here's a question for you. You ready? Hypothetically, somebody like me goes on this program. It doesn't have to be somebody like me when I say, you know, somebody who has no discipline with diet and exercises every day, but let's just say you go on it, right? Let's say you lose 20 pounds. Let's say you, you get back to your, your fighting weight, right? Um, do you go off of it then? Um, and if, if, and when you do go off of it and you're still maintaining these, these habits where you're not exercising and you're not really eating right, but now all of a sudden you're off of it and maybe you're not as, um, maybe you're back to eating more I mean, are you seeing people bounce up? I'm just curious what the after effects are if you go off of it. Yeah. So the expected result would be that someone would return to gaining weight again if they start eating more again. So ideally what we can do during the program and when we find a dose that's right for you to optimize your weight loss is we can kind of start ingraining some of those habits and eating patterns uh, that we talked about too, eating less, just being more mindful of how much you're chewing your food, slowing down and also coming to the realization, you know, like you look at a huge plate of food, it's like, well, my body actually doesn't need this whole plate of food. I can eat just a bit of it and be completely fine. So it's really, it's a tool to help us get to a place where we can live a better life and optimize our well being. You know, it's, it's hard to get past that hump, you know, like making a big dietary change when our hormone and our body is telling us to eat and eat more and eat carbs. Like it's, it's almost impossible sometimes, you know, like it feels like your body needs food. So uh, it's really just retraining those patterns and we give structured handouts, uh, diet guides and detox guides and everything to help with the process. But afterwards, if you stop, you're likely to gain some weight back. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make sure you, you, you kind of keep on the discipline, you know, and realize you don't need as much. Um, I thrive lean is a guaranteed weight loss program. And uh, Alex is here to tell us all it works down 18 pounds in like 10 weeks. Hey, Dr. Max say we're sending everybody your way. 858-240-1497 for I thrive 858-240-1497 men and women, young people, older people, it's like it's guaranteed and it's all FDA approved. Doc, appreciate you, man. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks, guys. You do the same. All right, Doc. Appreciate you, pal. And uh, I'm I'm strongly considering it now. I've seen all the success that Alex is having. Maybe I should get in there and do that. Um, all right, guys, listen, we got a lot going on this weekend in San Diego. You got 
the San Diego State BYU game tonight that starts at 7:30 on Channel Four. We're going to precede that game. We'll be on from 6:30 to 7:30. You got San Diego State playing tomorrow night against San Jose State, and oh my God, thank God, let's get San Diego State out of this Mountain West Conference. By the way, um, one thing I did here this week because you know all that talk about the Pac-12. I heard from somebody who's inside at San Diego State. Pac-12, yes. Big 12, also yes. In other words, mm. the Pac-12 and the Big 12 are both coming after San Diego State. And while Dan Patrick reported Pac-12, and I do believe that's what's ultimately going to happen, I My think San Diego State, uh, Mike Bones said that he thought San Diego State was in a great spot to get scooped up by the Pac-12 because of you know where they are and these other West Coast teams and the Pac-12 wanting the Southern California market. Um, so when I spoke to Mike about it, he thought that it was um, it was likely. But I spoke to somebody who's on the inside at the San Diego State Athletic Department this week, and I said, is it a done deal, Pac-12? And they said, it's not a done deal. Um, there's still discussions going on between Pac-12 and Big 12, according to this insider. Although he did say to me, I think the Pac-12 thing is ultimately going to happen. What I was excited about was San Diego State has options that um, could could be leveraged one versus the other to get the most out of the whatever it is you're going to get. But um, I was told not 100% done with Pac-12, but trending towards Pac-12. And that's so great because let me tell you something. If I could have a Washington state or uh, an Oregon state or an Arizona state replace a San Jose state, sorry, sorry, San Jose state, but give me those Pac-12 How teams. How about uh, Oregon? Well, I'm I'm not even talking about the upper echelon of Oregon or oh, I Washington. Get it. I get it. I'm talking about like the, the just the step down. Right. Um, the teams we can beat right away. How about instead of uh playing Nevada, UNLV, Hawaii, uh who else is in this conference? San Jose, New Mexico, Utah State. Yeah. Utah State. How you now you're Air talking Force. now you're Air Force. Ooh, no all more I triple gotta, option? Hello. All, all I gotta tell you is this when they get in the Pac 12 officially, I'm gonna start using the word we a lot. Yeah, oh, you no, are. you're not invited. Don't you do that to me. You're <laughs> not invited. You are not invited. You have to earn your ticket, sir. You are not invited. So, so you got San Diego State BYU weird. tonight. You got Michigan State and Gonzaga on the USS Abraham Lincoln uh, aircraft carrier tonight. I don't know where that came from. Like, That's my like, highlight of the day. I understand. I underst oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, let, let's get to the highlight of the day then. All right. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Veterans Day specials happening at Tory Holistics. Twenty uh, percent off for all veterans at Tory Holistics. And if you want twenty percent off, you're not a veteran. Use our promo code Got Your Back, all lower cap. Got Your Back. Spend a minimum of seventy-five bucks. You get twenty percent off your purchase at Tory Holistics. And then, just if you're watching on screen, um, you can see that these are all the specials they got going on right now. A whole bunch of stuff is off, yeah, big time this weekend. Yeah, and also up at Tory Holistics, it's the sixth annual peanut butter drive benefiting Got Your Back San Diego, which helps feed kids that you know are malnourished and don't have food. Um, and so if you bring in a 16-ounce jar, a plastic jar of peanut butter, you get a one-penny pre-roll, and that's happening at Tory Holistics. And so congratulations to Ruthie and the entire team at Tory because they do great things in the community besides just getting you awesome discounts on all your favorite cannabis brands and products for whatever, pain management, sleep, recreation, your choice. All right, Alex, we're kind of running out of time here. Highlight of the day, man. Highlight of the day, man. Like you said, where did this come from? A basketball game on an aircraft carrier? Yes, the USS Abraham Lincoln. And I believe, I don't know where this is at. North Island, I heard. Uh, uh, so somewhere in Coronado? Or is this off like downtown? Does anybody know? I, dude, I, last time I went to one of these games on the ship, President Obama showed up. I mean, it was a whole security yeah. nightmare. I want to say like Duke was playing. I definitely think I think it may have been Duke against Michigan State. Syracuse. I thought it was oh, Syracuse. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Syracuse was here at one time too. Look, it all sounds great, you know, until it's like 50 degrees outside and you're playing a basketball yep. game outdoors, and maybe there's a little bit of wind and maybe there's a little bit of shaking. Listen, it it all sounds great, but what I don't understand about this this event is why is San Diego State not involved? Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. You remember what happens with them when they play outside? This is a good thing. Oh, they dude. missed this every single thing. shot. Listen, I, know, I said just, I it, love it, that it's here. I love that they got big time programs here. I love that it's on ESPN. But I am so glad San Diego State's not in it. I am so right, glad well, they're not in it. 
Well, listen, for those of you that are going down to this Gonzaga-Michigan State game tonight on the Abraham Lincoln, good for you. I think the Abraham Lincoln is the boat, the boat, the ship that uh, Osama bin Laden's body was brought to and then was thrown off. I, I'm almost 99% sure uh, that that's the case. So happy Veterans Day to everybody. For yeah. all of you that are listening on 1090, we'll have a separate finish for all the podcasters on YouTube and audio podcast. Alex, glad that you're back this week. Happy Veterans Day. Be safe out there. We'll see you Saturday night up in Oceanside. Have a great weekend, everybody. Peace out, radio listeners. All right, guys, wrapping up a Friday afternoon. I want to say to everybody who's watching on YouTube right now, all the chatlins, Joe Rigby and Juliana and so many others that asked for my P.O. box to send a gift to Alex. That was so sweet of you guys. I really think that was awesome and so generous because I'm the kind of person that would be like, oh, give me the address. I want to send a gift. And then I would procrastinate or get distracted and never really send the gift. So um, for those of you that have actually taken that action, that was so nice of you guys, you know, and Alex, I've got Juliana's card here for you, oh, no. even though I accidentally opened it. Sorry, man. <laughs> it's all good. I got to take his off the top. Yeah. I got to take yeah, a little yeah. cut. I, I know? totally understand. Yeah. Um, I do want to say one thing um, just on a side note, Alex, you know what we got to do next week? What's that? We got to produce the Slay Queen t-shirts. My daughters are asking me for them and they want to buy them and they know all their sorority sisters want to buy them. We got to do Slay Queen t-shirts. They're a great Christmas gift. We also have to do the A Wise Man Once Said shirts with, with Browner's face on them. And the reason this is important is because, as I've told everybody, at the end of the year, I'm going to take whatever money is in our account from selling all this merch, and that becomes the Christmas bonus for the guy who just got married and the guy who got baby mama drama. You know what I mean? So I just want to say to everybody, I want to keep putting money in the bank, if you will, by creating great merch. And then at the end of the year, my two favorite charities. There we go. I like the sound of that. I'll, you exactly. know what? I'll take care of the wise man shirt. I'm just going to put a picture of my face thinking. And then my face once said, boom. boom. You know, I love to put my face on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. I'll buy yeah. one. This one's but sold the Slay, already. The Slay Queen t-shirts, I'm telling you right now, could go viral. We got a chance on those. I like it. I think. I think we do. I we got to get an image. Yeah, maybe even I'll do the hey, hey Alex. Maybe I'll redo the Hey King T-shirts and I'll send you the picture from your wedding where I'm wearing the crown. Yeah, I gotta. I think I gotta take a graphics course because you guys are asking a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do this. Okay, <laughs> by Monday, by Monday, I will have two drawn ups. So send me that picture of you with the crown on. I'll do one Hey King and I'll do one Wise Man said. I don't know why I'm holding up two fingers when I said one twice. Okay. I'll do right. those two, and then he can work on the, the Slay Queen whenever he gets time. Slay Queen's easy. Slay Queen is just super I easy. I made them already. You, uh, you guys I didn't, didn't like see them. them. No, I don't, I don't remember seeing Slay Queen. Okay. But there we go. There's the breakdown. Let's All right. I'll, I'm sending you a couple of pictures of, of the Hey King right now. Yeah. Send, a, send me the pictures of you wearing that crown. I'll, I'll okay. take care of that. All right. Will do. Um, so, okay. So, let me get this straight. So, so Alex, you're going to go to San Diego State, San Jose State on Saturday night. Yeah. Browner, you're you're kind of figuring out if you can come to the poorhouse in Oceanside with me and Rachel and Bill and Christina and uh, and Keg the band and the Brogos. I mean, I really need some demographics, but yeah, I think I'll show up. Okay, <laughs> you need demographics, huh? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Does that determine who you show up with, or does that determine whether or not you come? Listen, those are one and the same, brother. Those are one and the same. All right, if you say so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, listen, guys, have a great weekend. It was an amazing week. Alex, I'm telling you right now, man, you, you're out on Monday. Yeah. Browner moves over to your seat, right? Mm -hmm. I had Monday afternoon when we got off, I had a meeting with my advisors, my like tech advisors from Sided. Uh, and then on Tuesday, uh, Monday night, I had a dinner up in, in Orange County that I had to go to. Then on uh, Tuesday, I had meetings. Um, and then it, it all culminated yesterday, which is why I was off the air with a board meeting where I had board members, uh, you know, people are like, Ooh, sounds kind of exciting. Um, you know, it's a business and you know, there's a lot of money at stake here Yeah, and, uh, we got a lot of big plans and things are happening. So I've been thinking about this whole Twitter thing. You know how they're trying to charge now for, for verification. Uh, yeah, that's on pause now. Yeah. I, I, I hope Twitter blows up. I swear to you. I do. I hope Twitter blows up. I hope Elon Musk is like, well, I took it over and I thought I was the smartest guy in the world and I'm really good at designing electric cars, but I'm not so great at social media networks and 44 billion up in smoke. 
I just, I hope Twitter just completely blows up. This way I can get off of it completely. <laughs> you know, if it blows uh, be, up, then I'm off. It'd be great for a lot of people's mental health and bad for a lot of careers. Yes, it would. Bad for a lot of what? Careers. Yeah. My job yeah, specifically. Probably. Not, not no, so come on. We'll find it. We'll, we'll just, we'll go to Instagram exclusively. Or Facebook will come back. Ugh. Or people, people have started to hit me up on LinkedIn. No, oh, man. Yeah. Times are, it's just really, it just all comes down to how people communicate with each other. You know, there's other yeah. platforms anyway. All right, listen, have a great weekend, everybody. So much love support our sponsors. Thanks for sending this young fella gifts. That was super. Thank sweet you everybody. You yeah, and if you guys want to meet up on Saturday night, I'm going to go to this this event with Bill Hagen's band. So I'll see you guys up there. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Peace out.